There is a parity of um, this topic, and now we have a scientific, and we have this uh, engineer from NASA, United States, and then when we have Hannah Jurado. Welcome. Hello. I am Hannah Jurado. I'm coming from Texas. And now I want to uh, talk, not from NASA, but from the experiences. I do want to say that, repeat that in English. I am here representing myself. Um, I am not uh, um, representing the views of my employer or that of their contractors. Um, as a NASA speaker, we do not endorse or do any um, fundraising activities and uh, all the things you'll see to here today are public information or their information it's information that I have, that it's personal information that I'd love to share with you. Okay, so again, thank you Kumi Bus for inviting me. It's a privilege to be here um, in this country. Uh, this is the country of my father and my grandfathers. And um, it's an honor to be here. Um, I would not be here if it weren't for mentorship, uh, leaders, and heroes of mine, um, like uh, Dr. William Soto, and uh, like my mentor who always encouraged me, Dr. Velez, to go reach for the stars and uh, never gave up on me. And one of the results is uh, being there, meeting my hero, Buzz Aldrin, along with many, many other crew members from um, NASA. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about Earth itself. Um, it seems large to us from our perspective, but it's important to realize it's not limitless. Um, the world has so many layers. It's a diversity in human culture, in flora, in fauna. Take, it takes a lot. It requires a lot of uh, resources, and um, we need those to maintain environmental stability. We don't want to deplete those resources quickly and take them for granted. So our challenge today is to conceptualize a large world as our large world is having resource limitations. So I'm going to give you an analog for that. Um, here I have, uh, I wanted to show this picture recently came out also. Um, Joe Acaba is a of descent of Puerto Rico. Um, he is currently on the space station and he tweeted this picture of Puerto Rico. And I thought I'd share with you because it does from, from the crew's perspective show the big world out there that we live in. So I'm going to go over a quick description of what a, an adaptive, sustainable environment is. So a closed loop environment would be one here on Earth where everything is exchanged within Earth itself, all the matter. And a semi-closed loop environment would be an environment in which some matter is exchanged external of the Im internal environment. So the space station, for example is a perfect uh, semi-closed loop environment because we are self-sustained on board, but we still have to take supplies to the crew and uh, exchange hardware that needs to be fixed, for example. Um, the International Space Station, to give you a quick overview, is a habitable spa uh, spacecraft. It's been occupied since 2000, uh, about 14 years consecutively by crew members, by astronauts. It's orbiting 220 miles above the Earth's surface, and uh, it's an exploration platform for international research. And uh, it supports the advancement of science and technological innovation. So there's many requirements for sustaining life on uh, the space station. We have a water and food supply to think about, we have human health and hygiene to consider. We have energy, the fuel consumption alone, to keep the space station on board and to keep the lights going, to keep the 
microwave going, all those things that take energy. We even have to think very carefully about the environmental resource consumption. And this is where I wanted to take a moment to think for you to think about the fact that on the space station, it's about the size of a football field, but all the living spaces is fairly, you know, it's fairly small. We are able to see the data that comes through, for example, when there are several crew members breathing or exercising, the CO2 levels increase. We're able to see that. We're able to see uh, the different chemical impacts that we have on board the space station, for, for example, the um, possibly experiments. We're always doing the research. Um, unlike on Earth, where we don't have a ready system that tells us there, there's exactly this much carbon dioxide and we need to reduce it, the space station, we can see that. Um, we also have to consider ma maintaining the oxygen, nitrogen, all the different levels so that the crew can have a, a livable space. The logistics and maintenance required is also very, very important because we have to consider what if something breaks in space. If something breaks in space, then we cannot simply send something over right away. We'll still have, we'll still have some uh, time, we still need some time to get up <laughs> and send things on board, some things to um, exchange to swap out hardware. So logistics and maintenance is always required. We have to think ahead of the game. We have to think ahead uh, about your spare, sparing plans, how you're going to, you know, the trends on, on failures for hardware. Um, so all of those things are uh, similar to what we do here on Earth with transportation, with uh, main, starting to look at CO2 levels, starting to realize that we're depleting our resources. On board the space station, of course, you can see that right away. So I wanted to use the space station as an analog, just from my experience uh, alone. And you can see here, mm, I've had the uh, amazing opportunity to train crew for these sorts of activities. and. Um, the, I, astronaut Tracy Caldwell here is, is studying daily life on the ISS. You take those small things for granted, but you, you have to learn how to relearn how to do daily activities, so to speak, for space travel. Um, <clears throat> let me go back. Okay, I'll continue. So, Again, how, do, how does this relate to Earth? Sustainability on a global scale. If we were to visualize our own homes as a closed loop system, like the International Space Station, the results of the resource consumption and waste output um, and emissions like CO2 would become really, really obvious. The same system, sustainment concepts used on the ISS can be uh, applied on a global scale. That is, uh, because Earth's environment is complex and it's an integrated system and we must research, plan, design and develop new innovative technologies so we can approach the problems of increasing CO2, better waste management, logistics, transportation, all the things that you, you would normally see on a, on a global scale that I've learned myself on a, a smaller scale with the ISS. Um, and in order to do, th the point of doing that is that we achieve mission effectiveness. In our case, for Earth, um, our mission is to maintain, maintains Earth environmental stability as much as possible through sustainable development. Um, let me share this video with you because all of these things I talked about also have to do with impact, impacting the global temperatures. and. Um, I think it's a very interesting video to show if it comes up.
Now, I did want to go back for a second and uh, talk again about the CO2 levels, things like that, the, um, the environmental sustainability of the ISS. And I, want, I do also want to share this quick video with you um, to give you an idea of how that works, how, how, you know, to what degree we have to think, on what level of chemistry we have to think to recycle, to recycle what uh, we have in our environment. Critical life support systems on board the International Space Station. It's very expensive to launch oxygen to the space station. Every time you launch a vehicle into space, it costs millions of dollars. So if we can make it on the space station, it's a lot cheaper and a lot easier. There is a lot of chemistry involved in producing oxygen on ISS. We have to take water and break it apart into the atoms that it's composed of. We use the oxygen to put into the air so the crew can breathe it. And the hydrogen can either be vented overboard or we can send it to the Sabatier reactor, which combines it with the CO2 that the astronauts have breathed out to create more water, which can then go back into the loop. So the ethos operators run the oxygen generator to create that oxygen so that the astronauts can breathe while they're running science experiments that improve life on Earth. Be sure to tell your teacher to visit the NASA Explorer School's virtual campus. All right, well, I'm uh, going to wrap up a little bit here. Uh, sustainable development through innovation and technological development was kind of what I wanted to talk about. Um, much like the International Space Station, we have uh, limited resources here on Earth, and we must continue to apply those sustainable methodology um, here on Earth, this, similar to what we do with the space station. Um, we have to address issues like climate change, um, and if a potential problem exists, it's fundamental that we approach it with uh, problem-solving skills and define solutions or alternate solutions to our current issues. Um, air quality, fuel consumption, and renew renew renewable resources are, are obviously key for us uh, to move forward and um, move forward through sustainable development. Recycling methods and atmospheric pollutant scrubbers are great you know technologies that we can move forward with um, to help our our environment um, improve disposal and treatment systems as well um, i wanted to also share with you that view of the space station um, it serves as a reminder that our earth is beautiful and um, in its integral complexity and beauty we have to recognize and remember we are one global community and um, that, it's, that it has a boundary though. Earth has a boundary, just like the space station, and therefore its resources are limited and we need to take care of our Earth, we need to take care of our, our uh, environment, our, our people, and though it may take time, Continued effort in the acquisition of knowledge of our environment and sharing that knowledge through, the edu through education um, to achieve sustainable development through innovation will contribute to a positive environmental change and it'll yield effective results. And that'll be through the participation of uh, communities around the globe like all of you here, which again, thank you very much for having me here. I will leave with we leave you with one more short video, and uh, it was an honor to be here. T minus 15 seconds. Green board, T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5.
Thank you.